Hello and welcome to Cruise 5. Today, our guest is Grams Morgan. And I seem to have caught you when you were traveling from somewhere, going somewhere. How are you, Grams Morgan? First things first. I'm good, brother Joab. Thank you for having me. We're on the works, we're busy, but we're, you know, always making time to talk to the people. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we're really excited because you're coming to Malawi to perform at the Sun Music Festival. We'll get to talk about that a little bit later. There's a lot that we could talk about with you because there's your music, there's a lot of things. But first, um, a lot of Malawians just know Grams Morgan. And uh, of course, a lot of Malawians also know Morgan Heritage. I understand that Grams Morgan was born in what by Malawian standards would be quite a large family. Tell us more about that. Well, we were born to a big family. I have 29 siblings, you know. Um, <laughs> it is truly my father. They called him in Jamaica the the uh, the Abraham of his time. You know? <laughs> so there's many of us. <laughs> so however, there's in the music, there are five in Morgan Heritage and currently working three that are touring. Uh, my sister Yuna is spending some time off and my brother Luke's. But uh, you always see me, Peter, and Mojo. And currently, you know, of course, I've, I've been, during the pandemic, I've been doing a, um, a solo project. But it, it's a very big family. You know, it's a, it's a very big family where um, you have flight attendants in the family. We have nurses, you have musicians. So it's not only just music. I can imagine that. I mean, for 30 people, that, that's quite a big, big crowd. Tell me, I, I, and I know this might be a little bit sensitive, but maybe you're used to people asking this because even by Malawian standards, that's a huge family. Are those all children from one woman or your mother, uh, your father married several women? My, it was several, several women, but my, it's one father. Everyone has one, one father, so we are happy. One king. <laughs> On that line, yeah, what man. number are you? On that line, what number are you? I think I'm a number 11, I, I think. <laughs> then I'm, I'm 11 or 10. I have tell to double check. Tell me about growing up in this kind of setup. Were you all growing up together in one huge compound or each one was growing up with their mother somewhere and so it was pretty much a regular family with maybe four or five kids? Tell me how it was like growing up. Well, in the beginning, of course, all the children were not born at the same time, you know? Yes. Um, so as children got older, they would go to the university and then more children will be born. And so it, it, it happened at different times, but most of the time we were all grew, growing up in the same house. Must have been a lot of fighting in the house, I guess. Um, over the bathroom. Yes. Who wanted to go first? <laughs> but we were, <laughs> we were, we were growing and learned to always put God first and learn to take care of each other. Um, God was a very prevalent subject in my family and spirituality because that is the, the, the nucleus of holding a family together and sitting down and having dinner together. Those things are very important in building a family. Fantastic indeed, Grams Morgan. We also like to know what our guests love listening to. Now, it's a bit tricky when you're talking to an artist because obviously we know you as a very, very popular reggae artist. But besides the music that you play, which is predominantly reggae, do you listen to other kinds of music? You are in Tennessee, which is the home of country and Western music. Yes, I listen to a lot of uh, country music. There's an artist by the name of Morgan Whalen, which is, uh, I, I just discovered him uh, maybe about six months ago during this pandemic. Amazing vocalist. He even got into some trouble um, the other day and it, it's, it's unfortunate, but he's an amazing artist, mm -hmm. however you put it. Um, I'm listening to a lot of Afrobeat, you know, um, uh, this artist named Special K out of South Africa, um, Jerusalem, I don't know if you heard that song, it's only over a billion views, I think that's a brilliant song, I would love to do a song with her, um, so there's a lot, during this pandemic I've been discovering a lot of new music, man, but listen to a lot of reggae, a lot of old school reggae, um, some of the new artists I'm listening to as well in reggae music, and a, a, a lot of gospel. I listen to a lot of gospel as well because I believe in gospel music. There are some of the best singers in the world. Brilliant. If I were to ask you to select a song, and I'm, I'm going to be doing this uh, several times, I'll actually ask you to select about five of your favorite songs, but they don't necessarily need to be your favorite songs. Any songs that you like, really. What would be the first choice that you would make? Any song. 
Africa Unite by by Bob Marley. Um, yeah, so I would think uh, down by the down by the river by Morgan Heritage. Yes. Um, Tennessee whiskey by um, Chris Stapleton. Yes. I would pick Try Ja Love by Jamiri Morgan. Yes. Stand in My Boots by Morgan Whalen. My goodness, I do love your taste of music already. Tennessee Whiskey is one of the best songs that I love, uh, modern country and western. That's the choice of our guest today on Cruise 5, Grumps Morgan. How about we start with some Tennessee Whiskey, which is where our guest today is speaking from Tennessee. And uh, this <laughs> is a lovely country and western song. This is Cruise 5, and today we're talking to Grumps Morgan. A lot of Malawians know Grumps Morgan, a lot of Malawians know Morgan heritage, but what some Malawians may not know is that Gramps Morgan actually was also a fairly good football player, quite a football star, I understand. Tell us, tell us more about that. Well, when you go through school, you know, you find different activities to get involved in, you know. Yes. And there was one day when I was in high school, uh, my, my football coach, but at the time he was the uh, biology teacher, and he saw me and said, wow, son, you ever play football before? And I said, no, never. <laughs> I play soccer. <laughs> you know, we are Jamaicans. <laughs> exactly. And he, he invited me. Yeah, he invited me to play, uh, to come up to the practice. And I came out and watched the first two days just to look and see this game. And then he put me in pads and a helmet. And the rest is history. And uh, I was offered several scholarships to play um, college football. Um, and then at, at, at another point, um, after I focused on my music, you know, because I was very talented in football, um, based on my size and weight and strength. And then it got to a point where the music took off and Morgan Heritage, we decided to work out on some solo albums. And I think it was 2008. And we sat down as a family and said, let's just take some time and do things that we've always wanted to do. And I went and played semi-professional football for two years. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, that's mind-blowing because, I mean, nobody would have ever guessed that you played football. But now let's just be clear. Are we talking about the soccer that we know here in Africa or this is American football? Which one exactly is this? This is American football when you put on the helmets and smash each other. Exactly. And the strongest exactly. man wins. <laughs> because I'm trying to imagine you, uh, even as a young person, I'm sure you must have been quite a very well-built man. And playing uh, soccer like we do here, it doesn't really match. But obviously, American football, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I want to tell you, in soccer, it's very important for your manhood that you have to learn how to play soccer as a Jamaican man. So we, we, I've learned to play soccer as well. So it, it, you had to learn to play soccer. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Now let's just get back to music. Um, I guess people would say you never really had a chance. You never really had a choice. You were born into a musical family and I don't know, you wouldn't have become anything else, would you? Um, well, there was a lot of extracurriculum activities I could have got caught into, into the streets. I could have got, you know, that, that, that is a lot of things that the African-American society is because of the, the, the environment. I could have got mixed up in the streets a lot, but I'm happy that I, I chose to listen to my father's counseling, follow my bigger brothers and the example that they set. And it was music. And, you know, a, a, education was a very big, is very still a big part of my family because I believe that with education you can achieve almost anything you desire. Mm -hmm. and, and, and getting into music, how was it like? Uh, did you ever have a moment where you said, okay, now I'm going to get into music or you just, you know, just glided right into it? Yeah, brother, it was always something, Joab, that um, the, 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 the music was always around because of my father. So you find that if you raise a child around a certain thing or a certain type of lifestyle, that is what is going to influence the child. So me watching my father rehearse and prepare to go on tour, you know, with Frankie Beverly and Mays and Curtis Blow. I remember those days as a child. 
So as, as you turn a big man, you find that your influences as a child now begin to influence you as a man. And so music was always around me, man. I can imagine that. That's our guest today on Cruise 5, Grams Morgan, a member of Morgan Heritage as a band, but he's also a solo artist in his own repute. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to listen to one of his favorite songs again. Welcome back. Today, we're talking to Grams Morgan. He is our guest on Cruise 5. And he is speaking from um, his car, actually. Uh, we, we caught him, we caught him um, moving from one place to another. Because of the time difference, it's really difficult to catch somebody when they are, when they are at home because he's always moving up and down. Tell us about Morgan Heritage. Uh, how did it start? Did you guys start with your solo careers and then he said, hey guys, let's come back together, let's come together. Or it started with Morgan Heritage as a band and then you split to do your solo career. T tell me about this. A very good question, Joab. Um, I, I don't think we've ever been asked that question. But yes, it was the vision of my father that he saw the talent in us. You know, he saw my sister, Yuna, when she was crying and said, you know, she's going to sing. He told him, my mother, she's going to sing, you know. Uh, you know, of course, they probably thought he was crazy. But here was a man having so many children. But each one of us just had a, a different talent, you know. Some would sing, some would play the guitar. But the first thing that started was we was all a band and there was eight of us in Morgan Heritage at the time. And then as the, the, the other ones got older, they decided they started had to have children and responsibilities. And then they went on to have families and then it went down to five. And then we, you know, continued to try to make our family proud musically. But it always started as a five piece band that the world knows now today as Morgan Heritage. And uh, then you took your own solo career. How, how deep into uh, yes. as Morgan Heritage did that take? Because I know as Morgan Heritage, you have had quite a long, a, 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 long, a long time playing music, almost two decades. And uh, so many accolades that you've gotten along the way, but still you, you felt that you needed to, to, to take your own solo career. Tell me about making that decision. Well, great, great question. Because a lot of people probably be like, oh, Graham Morgan is solo. Graham Morgan leave Morgan Heritage. No, it is not true. <laughs> so what it was is that we sat down as a family and said, what is the next challenge? You know, and this was before we won the Grammy. We said to ourselves, what is next? What is the next challenge? And my father said to us one year, uh, we was in Paris. And he said, he said to us many years ago, I think it was around 1999, that one day we, I want the band to work on some solo albums because the show was just incredible. And what he saw, that it was like five solo artists on the stage because it was so many different dimensions of the band. So when our father said it to us, we didn't believe it. We hated the idea. But after growing and accomplishing so many things and getting all the accolades, the challenge was for each member to stand on their own with no strength to lean from the other. And we made this decision as a family in 2007. And then I put out my first solo album in 2009 with the song called, Just shall wash away all the tears from my eyes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that was that song. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I put out another solo album in 2012. And then we came back together and then we won the Grammy in 2016. And we've been going since then. And the pandemic, you know, all of us was home. And then I started to, I wanted to improve upon my songwriting um, and say, you know, I have this time where I'm in the house every day. What am I going to do? And then I met this songwriter by the name of Johnny Reed. And he really helped to fulfill that and really um, just opened my eyes, not only with music, but as a, as, as a man, as a, as a family, as, as, a, as a son. And we just, we just had a kindred spirit that produced an amazing album. And here comes my third solo album, released in July, titled Positive Vibration. We're going to talk about more about your songs and the fantastic songs that you have done, particularly the one that every Malawian is waiting to listen to. But I'm not going to jump into that. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back with our guest, Grams Morgan. Oh, yeah. 
Welcome back. This is Cruise 5, and today we're talking to Grams Morgan all the way from the US of A, but he is coming to Malawi, the home heart of Africa, to perform, and we will talk about that performance a little bit later on, but for now, we're just getting to know more about him as an artist, but also as a member of the Morgan Heritage uh, Band, uh, which I think could be a little bit problematic when people look at it. They're like, how do you manage to run your own solo career, but also be a dedicated member of the band. Of course, in your case, it's a bit unique because this is a family band. So, you know, you guys are related by blood, but still sometimes you are drawn between the band and your own gig. Tell us how you manage that. Isn't it a little bit uh, difficult at times? Well, a great question, Joab. What really happens is that we really watch what's going on in the universe, right? So here's the pandemic, and then Grams has a song. When I released the song, People Like You, it, it went crazy everywhere, right? So, you know, we said as a family, um, you know, my father called me and said, this is an amazing song. Peter called me and said, bro, where did you find that song? Mojo called me. So everybody was like, I think you're onto something here. You should keep going. Don't stop. So it's just a time where we just wait on the universe. There was no plans to release any solo album or none of that was planned. It was just, we had five, before the pandemic, we had five months of touring set to go as Morgan Heritage, ready to go. And then the pandemic happened and then everyone was home for basically almost two years. And then we just started writing music and I released People Like You and then I released Runaway Bay and then a uh, woman like you, and it just kept going. So it was just the universe saying, okay, Grams, it's time to do another solo album. Grams Morgan, you are coming to Malawi and Malawi is excited about that. Tell us how excited you are, because I, I take it it's been quite a long time uh, since you traveled and did uh, gigs like this. The world is just opening up, especially here in Malawi, and we're just getting our festivals back, and people are so fired up, and they want to see you on stage. Tell us how you feel about Sand Music Festival 2021 in Malawi. I'm excited about this festival because it is a Malawian festival. It is an African festival celebrating African music and our culture. So anything, if anybody knows Grams, they know that that is very dear to my heart. Um, also, it's been a long time that of the organizers have been trying to get me on this festival. Um, so it's something that's been on my mind for like the past, I think it's, we've been trying to get on this festival for about four years um, because when Morgan Heritage came there, my solo songs were very big there, One in a Million and Wash the Tears and those songs, but I never got a chance to return. And a friend of mine that's in Malawi, we always discuss me coming back maybe during Valentine's to do a show for the ladies, but it nothing before the time. So Sands Music Festival, thank you for finally making it happen. Um, I don't know, I'm being blessed in this time of this pandemic, <laughs> but I plan to bring some music to uplift the people and make them feel very good. And I, I'm so excited. People like you, people love people like you so much. Tell me about that song. Is it a gospel song? It has won a gospel, uh, best gospel song award and so many, two, three awards as a matter of fact. Is it a gospel song? What, what's behind that song really? It's a powerful song. Yes, brother. Well, brother Joab, the, the, the gospel is the good word, right? So what is gospel? Gospel is the word of God. It's goodly words. So Yes, it is one best gospel song of the year um, within the IRAMA Awards, which I was blown away by. Um, but it's not a gospel song. It's a song, it's like when you listen to We Are The World, We Are The Children, We Are The Ones Who Make A Brother Day, So Let's Giving. So you, you never hear them mention anything about God and spirit or anything. And it's the same thing with people like you. It's a song that is for every genre every nation, every race. Fantastic, fantastic. We're gonna wind up shortly. I just got a set of questions which I would like to ask you to which you can only answer yes or no. And uh, we just wheedle through this list as quickly as we can. But the first question that I'd like to ask you is to tell us your full name. What is your full name? My name is Roy Gramps Morgan. Do you have a tattoo? No. Do you have any piercings? No. Do you have children? Yes. 
Have you ever shot a gun? Yes. Have you ever cried over someone? Yes. Have you ever killed a chicken before? No. Have you gotten into a fight before? Yes. Have you gotten any surgeries? Yes. Have you ever stayed in the hospital? No. Have you donated blood? No. Do you know your blood group? Yes. Have you ever smoked weed? One more time. Have you ever smoked weed? No. Would you smoke weed? No. Have you ever drunk alcohol? Yes. Do you drink alcohol? No. Have you broken someone's heart? Yes. Have you had a crush on someone? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he says. Of course, he has. <laughs> we, 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 we talk about, uh, we spoke about your children. Tell us about your children. I understand you've got quite a small club going on down there. How many children do you have, Graham Morgan? Well, many, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big tribe, you know. But the, the, the oldest, the oldest one, the Jamiri, is the is the is the most known. Yes. Um, I have another daughter named Onida. She will be. I'll be releasing a song with her, but before the end of the year. And I have another song that another son that is in music that his name is Priel. So yeah, Jamiri is the most known because I do a song with him um, called Trija Love, and he's always on tour with Morgan Heritage. So, but there are many children, man, and many of them sing and have talent. How many of them do you have? It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to you to find out how many children a grand smoke and had. <laughs> he wants to give it a secret for now. <laughs> yes. Tell us about how you're preparing for the show in Malawi. You know, the way people are so sensitive about, oh, is Morgan Heritage coming with a band? Or is he just going to be playing some CDs? Morgan Heritage has come to Malawi before and they have had a very fantastic show. Tell us about what yeah. people are going to see at Sun Music Festival. Is it going to be a full band? What is it going to be like? Full band. It will be four, full band, five or six musicians on stage. We put together an amazing show. Um, I'm going into rehearsal in the next two days to tighten up some more of the show. Um, so I'm excited. I brought some of the best musicians together to really put together and show Malawi and the world because I hope the world will be watching online and when Malawians tweet and send out to the world what takes place on October the 2nd, 2021, they will say, wow, Gramps has a nice show or they enjoyed themselves or you know, they will say, oh, he needs to work on it. But I'm excited for everyone to really see um, what I have in store to get the Gramps Morgan experience.